Wales and Georgia, this weekend, folks, Autumn Nation Series. We're going to go through some squads, some stats and predictions, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on how this one is going to go. Now, folks, it is the, the festive season, fast approaching, and if you wanted yourself some British and Irish Lions gear, check out that sweater. Goodness gracious me. That, that could be a genuine gift if you're a fan of festive sweaters, or a bit of a gag gift so if you want to check that out. Link down in the description to the, the, the British and Irish Lions store that affiliated with the channel. So, um, yeah, interesting stuff for, for the festive season. Um, Wales and Georgia, man, these teams don't meet each other that often. By my count, it's just the three times that they have played each other. The most recent one being in 2020, which was an 18-0 win to the Welsh in the, um, the Autumn Nations Cup. Remember, kind of one of our first ones back from COVID, if memory serves. 2019 Rugby World Cup, a bit more convincing, 43-14, and then 2017, 13-6. So, yeah, 13-6 is pretty tight in the scheme of things. But, um, yeah, not much history to go by. And uh, it's been a couple of years since these teams have met. So it could be a pretty, uh, pretty interesting one. For all kind of clarity, for all in all honesty, Georgia's a team that I don't see that much of. Uh, the tier two teams are kind of a bit harder to track in terms of not every game has kind of full player and match stats. So, um, but yeah, I still try to keep track of them as best I can. And I think all rugby fans would like to see more of the Georgians. They're one of those teams that kind of is on the fringes of, you know, they just need more game time, don't they, against top level competition. But they are getting it this week against Wales. So that's at least one pleasing thing from Cardiff. Um, for Wales, they've, they've made a few changes to the side that played uh, against Argentina last week. Some of those are um, injury and force, and some of those are just Wayne Pivak wanting to get the most out of the guys uh, who he won't have available next week. Remember, Wales have still got a game next week, uh, but he won't have any of his Premiership guys available. I don't think Wales have got any guys based in France at the moment, do they? But yeah, uh, he needs to get the most out of those guys before kind of switching back to the domestically based guys for next week's game. So Gareth Thomas, Ken Owens, and Dylan Lewis, that's the same front row. Uh, that we saw perform pretty solid work against the Argentinians last week. Ben Carter comes in in the second row. Remember, Will Rollins is going to be out for a wee while with injury. Uh, Adam Beard continues on in his spot. Uh, Jack Morgan, Justin Tiberick, and Josh McLeod. Uh, it's a pretty changed back row. Jack Morgan coming up from the bench where he featured last week. Justin Tiberick got through like 18 bloody tackles last week, which is... Kind of not surprising because he is just an absolute tackling machine. And then uh, Josh McLeod, I think this is his third bite at the cherry, but he f should finally get uh, a Wales cap to his name. I think, didn't he get once the game was canned and once he got injured? So congratulations to the young man, assuming he gets through the next kind of 24 hours unscathed and um, gets the feature for his country. Uh, it's going to be a big moment for him. Long time coming. But uh, yeah, Pivak seems to have a bit of faith that he can uh, push on. I mean, he's pushed Falatau out of his position for a week. But admittedly, uh, Pivak basically just said he's being careful with some players. So that's Falatau, isn't it? And not just Falatau, but I mean, especially Falatau. Falatau's had a, a big couple of weeks. So yeah, you need to kind of manage the players as best you can. Especially the ones who are... In all fairness, you know, they're over 30 years old. They're a bit more prone to those kind of niggling injuries. So, I mean, Fartel's still on the bench. But anyway, you know what I mean. Fewer minutes for him. Thomas Williams, Reese Priestel is a 19 combo. So Reese gets a chance uh, up from the bench where he was last week. Uh, Owen Watkin, George North is the 12-13 combo. So Watkin's been on the bench for a couple of weeks. So it's good to see him uh, get a chance in the, um, you know, in the starting lineup. And uh, George North... Quiet in that first game, but kind of came into his own a bit more in that game last week. I mean, Wales just generally upped their shift against the Argentinians, didn't they? Cuthbert and um, Adams are on the wings this week. Oh, for a second there. Adams hasn't been featuring in the first couple of games. Remember, he's been injured, so it's good to see him uh, finally back, and we'll see if he can kind of tear into the action. And Reese Sam still features off at fullback. He's one that obviously won't be available next week. I think Pivak just wants to get that guy as much time at fullback as he can because he wants to see just uh, long-term if that's an option for him going into the World Cup because Halfpenny is there on the bench. Remember, he was initially named at fullback for that first game and then had to pull out with injuries and had to shift Anscombe. So, 
yeah, there's no point kind of rushing half penny back when he can probably play next week when Reese Zammer isn't available. I mean, Reese Zammer, he certainly carried a fair bit from, from fullback last week, didn't he? He kicked a wee bit, but he just likes to eye up the space, which is sometimes just what you want from a guy uh, playing fullback. I guess it depends on the game. So uh, how he goes against the Georgian guys will be uh, an interesting one to see. Bradley Roberts gets some game time from the bench as well, which is pleasing because he's been playing really well in the URC, so pleased for him. Roger Jones, Sam Wainwright, Difford Jenkins is one guy that I don't remember seeing that much of. I know he plays in the Premiership for Exeter, and he's a big, tall dude. He's pretty young. But, yeah, big, big uh, day for him to get his first international cap as well. Uh, Fala tells you on the bench, like I mentioned, Dane Black is going to get a game. Sam Costello is going to get a game. And as I mentioned, Lee Halfpenny. So, I don't want to say wholesale changes, but it's a lot of changes uh, for the Welsh side. So, um, yeah, what did uh, Pivak say? He said, uh, Josh McLeod is strong over the ball. That's what he's looking forward to. And um, with uh, Alan Wynne jones not playing, he basically said he wanted to get David Jenkins in because he's not going to be available next week. So Alan Wynne-Jones will likely be back for next week's game. Uh, for the Georgians, as I mentioned, the Georgians team, I don't I don't get to see that much of. But uh, obviously, uh, the stereotype for the Georgians is a big scrum, big forwards. And traditionally, from when you've looked at the lineups, you look at the starting 23 or starting 15 and go, oh yeah, most of these guys play in France uh, for the forwards. And then the backs, oh, a lot of these guys are kind of amateurs playing in uh, in Georgia, but not really as much the case these days. Like, I watched the highlights of, um, of Georgia's game against Samoa last week, which they lost, and um, like their first try, the Georgians are five meters out from the line, they got advantage. Do you think they just keep trucking it up through the forwards and try and drive their way over? Nah, man, they spin it wide, and the right wing is the one who goes over. Uh, and then their second try was a mall try. So, yeah, kind of a bit of a mixed bag. If you saw their game against the Italians earlier in the year where they won, goodness gracious, man. Like some proper kick return play. It's very, very dangerous from, from the back. So, um, yeah, uh, a bit of a live wire team in the backs these days as well, the Georgians. Uh, they have got Gogashvili, Chikoidza, and Papidza as their front row. That's the same front row that played against the uh, the Samoans last week. And likewise, it's the same two locks. Mikhail Tadz has been a mainstay for the Georgian second row for ages. And then Cheshvili is there alongside him. The back row is where uh, I think the Georgians particularly shine in their forwards these days. Uh, Saginadza wasn't in the team last week, but he's playing. He's a workhorse. Beka Gurgadza is legit class. I mean, I still go on and on about that guy every time uh, I mentioned the Georgian team for whatever reason, but I mean, the stats just tell the story. The guy gets through heaps of tackles, he gets through heaps of carries, and his like meters per carry rate is generally very good. He played eight last week, he's at uh, seven this week, so very versatile guy, very, very good player. And then uh, Jalagonia comes up from the bench to start at number eight. Uh, Lobjanidza and Abjadadza are the 19 combo. That seems to be the pretty standard combo these days. I think both those guys play in their rugby in France. Abjandadza can kick him from halfway. He certainly did that against the Samoans last week. Uh, Sharakidza is still captain at 12. Tabladza is there at 13. They've brought on Modibadza on the right wing. I don't think I've seen him play before. Torua is an absolute veteran who's been playing since the 2011 World Cup. He's on the left wing. He's um, pretty Mr. Consistent. And then Ninyash really is just the flare guy at the back. Like, absolute excitement machine. Like, I mentioned the kick return stuff. If you kick that guy the ball and don't watch out, he's going to punish you. Just kind of like what you think Kapuotso did against Wales earlier on in the Six Nations. That guy did against Italy. So, yeah, he's, he's real dangerous. Really, really elusive, elusive guy uh, at the back. They've brought in a couple of other guys um, as changes on the bench, but the bench is largely, I think, the same as it was last week. So, yeah, as I said, I'm a bit sad that I can't go more into the stats for the Georgians, but all I will say is from what I've seen of them, definitely not as kind of solely forwards orientated as what we have kind of got the stereotype. You know what I mean? Uh, for stats for Wales... Their trend, which I mentioned last week, of them getting better results when a higher proportion of their game is kicking, kind of proved to be true last week. Like, the games where they've kicked really not that much, uh, they've had bad results this, this year, but they kicked like 12% of their actions, if that makes any sense. 
uh, last week compared to like some games it was like four or five. You know, they, they just keep trying to run it or they keep trying to pass it. Um, last week was was high. Any game where it's been above 10%, they tended to do well, either close loss or win, and 12% last week. So boot to ball has worked for the Welsh this year. Whether they keep that up against Georgia or they try to, you know, do something different, uh, maybe a bit more expensive remains to be seen, but it just seems to be a thing uh, that the games where they've controlled boot to ball has, um, has gotten some good pay for them. Wales, though, have conceded a few more tries of late. I think in their last like, three or four games, they've conceded a more try pretty much each time. And as I mentioned, Georgia scored a more try last week against Samoa. So Georgia still like them all. I'm trying to talk up their backs, but they they, they still like them all. Uh, Georgia mauled it seven times against Samoa last week. So there's a stat for you. I do have some Georgian stats, uh, just not that many. Uh, Wales have the worst discipline of all the Six Nations teams. Uh, so that's an area they'll have to be, I guess mindful of um, against the Georgians because like I mentioned they, uh, they've got a goal kicker who can kick it from pretty much 50 metres if you're not careful um, like I mentioned the recent history is, is, is all Wales average score doesn't really matter across three games but they've had close ones they've had 18-0 they've had 43-14 so it's a bit of a mixed bag uh, predictions wise the bookies have got the Welsh by 20 points which is, I guess, pretty similar to their most recent game. And uh, the rugby forecast algorithm says 23. It is on a Cardiff. Andrea Piatti is the ref. Uh, it's a 2 a.m. kickoff for me here in NZ. I know it's an afternoon game for you guys in, in Wales. So a nice one for you guys. I'll probably watch this one delayed. And um, we'll see how it goes. It's absolutely miserable here. Hopefully... Uh, I guess the roof will be closed, so it won't really matter if it's a fine day in Cardiff or not. But yeah, hopefully uh, it's a good game. As I said, we don't get to see these teams meet that often, so I'm really pleased for the Georgians to get themselves some hands on some Tier 1 action. But um, yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts, and um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.